gonna be a villain all his life. Today I'm talking about the 1960s musical Oliver. It was written by the late great Lionel Bart. He was a fascinating character, a child prodigy and musical genius. He was a Jew whose family escaped the Ukrainian Cossacks and settled in London, England. With his magnum opus, Oliver, he almost single-handedly launched the British musical scene, which had previously been dominated by the Americans. Oliver opened in 1960 and had record-breaking runs in both the West End and on Broadway. Not generally a fan of musical, but I have a huge fondness for this one. My Victorian ancestry is from the East End of London, and I have a personal interest in the crimes known as the Whitechapel murders, and I feel I know quite a bit about the history of that part of London. So not surprisingly, I have a copy of the musical on DVD, my favourite character is Fagin, played on the opening night in 1960 by Ron Moody, the great British character actor. He also starred in the screen musical and had a remarkable singing voice and with his slight Jewish lilt, he was very convincing as leader of the gang of pickpockets. With all this success on stage and screen, you'd think that Lionel Bart would have lived a long and happy life enjoying the fruits of his labours, but that wasn't the case. He lived a very sad latter part of his life. After Oliver he had several other projects which he tried to fund himself, but running out of money he made the disastrous mistake of selling the rights to all his present and future work, including Oliver, to Max Bygraves, the rather smarmy English entertainer. What's worse is that Bygraves gave him a mere £350. Hardly seems possible. In fact, it was all wrong because Bygraves would go on to sell those rights on for a quarter of a million. Still small money in terms of the present day, but a lot back then. He was bankrupt by 1972. For the last 20 years of his life, Lionel Bart had no more big success and suffered from depression and alcoholism. All of this took place at a fairly important period in my life. I was just starting at age 12, St Peter's School for Boys in West Southbourne in Bournemouth. The school had a reputation for great dramatic productions each year and in fact had just finished the construction of a new 500 plus seat theatre tiered seating, an orchestra pit. In fact, it would be hard to imagine a better theatre in the south of England at the time. For years, the staff and pupils had put on Gilbert and Sullivan operettas. In fact, the last of those, which would have coincided with my first full year there, was the Mikado. Three Little Maids from School Are We, etc. Anyway, June 1971 was the date set for the production of Oliver. Our singing voices had been carefully listened to and I was selected to be one of the workhouse boys and one of Fagin's gang of pickpockets. I can remember going home with my copy of the score learning all the words to all the songs, and I still know them all to this day. I especially remember Geoffrey Tristram, who was a history teacher by day, 
but organist at Christchurch Priory. He was all set to play on the school's organ, a huge piece of wooden furniture requiring both hands and both feet. But on the opening night, the organ failed. And instead, he played the entire score on grand piano. A pretty amazing feat. Our Fagan was played by Fred Castle, maths teacher. Morris Gent, German teacher, was a very menacing Bill Sykes. Soprano Alistair Hume played the title role Oliver. I think it was seven nights in total and most of my family came on one or other of the nights. And my uncle Tony rewarded me with this marvellous thing which I still have. It plays still. A few clicks and pops, but it's a nice memento of the time. As are these programmes from the night, one of which is covered in signatures from some of the cast. So you can see of late I've been wallowing in nostalgia.